I'm Clarence Horton. Thank you for joining us for another historical moment in the story of Cabarrus County. What's in a name? In the case of Cabarrus County, the name contains elements of romance, adventure, and just some old-fashioned politicking. Our story begins in 1776, when Stephen, or Etienne Cabarrus, who was the son of a prosperous merchant, banking, and shipping family, left his home in Bayonne, France, along with his brothers, to travel to the new broadlands of the New World, to Edenton, North Carolina, on the Carolina coast. In 1776, the town was in its golden age, a thriving community of merchants who traded with Carolina's sister colonies, as well as the mother country of England and the islands of the West Indies. It was the second oldest town in North Carolina, having been incorporated in 1722, and was the home to such outstanding buildings as the Chowan County Courthouse which has now been restored and which commands a magnificent view of Edenton Bay and Albemarle Sound. Old Edenton was home to such outstanding patriots and citizens as Judge James Iredell, who served on the first United States Supreme Court. Joseph Hughes, an Edenton businessman who signed the Declaration of Independence. And Dr. Hugh Williamson, who signed the United States Constitution. Edenton was also home to the Edenton Tea Party, sponsored by the ladies of Edenton in opposition to the tea taxes imposed by the mother country of England, which they considered to be oppressive. One of our main streets in Concord is named after another famous Edenton resident, Francis Corbin. Corbin was a surveyor and was the last land agent for Robert Carteret, the Earl of Granville who gives his name to the Granville Line, which separates Cabarrus and Rowan counties. In 1758, Corbin built the Cupola House at Edenton, one of the most significant early dwellings in North Carolina. The house was purchased by the Cupola House Association about 1918. The association raised funds to protect the property and to restore it. The Cupola House was designated a National Historic Landmark in 1971 and is still open to scores of visitors each year. It's owned and operated by the Cupola House Association. In 1786, Stephen Cabarrus occupied a house in Edenton as his town residence. That home, now known as the Homestead, was built about 1771 by Robert Smith a leading Edenton merchant. It's situated on Water Street in Edenton and commands a breathtaking view of Edenton Bay and Albemarle Sound. Soon after his arrival in Old Edenton, Cabarrus was introduced to the lovely Jean Henriette Bodley, the lovely widow of Lord Granville's last land agent. He married Mrs. Bodley the following year and became master of Pembroke Plantation, located just across the bay from Old Edenton. Cabarrus soon gained the trust and confidence of his new friends and neighbors, who often elected him to positions of prominence. During a 20-year political career, Cabarrus was honored by being elected as Speaker of the North Carolina House on 10 separate occasions. He also served as member or leader of important committees. He was in favor of the establishment of a state university and was honored by serving on the first Board of Trustees for the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. He also was in favor of establishing a permanent state capital for North Carolina and voted in favor of its establishment at the location which became present-day Raleigh. A street in the new capital was and is named in his favor today. In 1792, Speaker Cabarrus supported the efforts of the Scots-Irish 
and German settlers who lived in the Rocky River section of Old Mecklenburg County. Those pioneers wanted to create a new county to be called Union. Their efforts met with easy success in the House of Commons, but the initial bill was defeated in the Senate. Sponsors of the legislation amended the legislation to change the name for the new county to Cabarrus to honor the popular Speaker of the House and to gain the necessary political support for its passage. With a change in the boundary for the new county, the legislation easily passed both houses of the State Assembly and was signed into law on December the 29th, 1792, the date from which Cabarrus County dates its existence. Residents of the newly created county, however, were unable to agree on a location for the public buildings for the county seat. In January 1794, local legislators approached Speaker Cabarrus at a legislative session then being held in Fayetteville and explained the dilemma to him. Stephen Cabarrus wrote an open letter to the residents of his new namesake county counseling harmony and compromise in the settlement of this dispute. As a result of his efforts, in 1795, the following year, local residents were able to agree on a compromise location on a long ridge overlooking Three Mile Branch a location which became present-day Concord, North Carolina. That letter from the speaker is one of the prized historical possessions of Cabarrus County today. Stephen Cabarrus only had one child, a little daughter who died tragically in 1784 at age six. His wife, Jean, died in 1799, followed by Cabarrus himself in 1808. The family was originally buried in the old family cemetery at Pembroke Plantation. But in 1911, Cabarrus and his young daughter were reinterred in the old church cemetery at historic St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Edenton, second oldest church in North Carolina. With the death of his only child, Stephen Cabarrus left no direct or lineal descendants. But through his beloved nephew, Augustus Cabarrus, the Cabarrus family still thrives today in the Western United States and in Canada. In 1998, through the generosity of Mrs. Marie Cabanis, a direct descendant of Augustus Cabarrus, Cabarrus County was able to obtain a picture of the only surviving portrait of the speaker painted in 1780. A faithful reproduction of that picture hangs in a place of honor beside the front entryway at the old historic Cabarrus County Courthouse. Although Stephen Cabarrus was never able himself to visit his namesake county, he wrote in his letter in 1794 that he would always cherish the honor of having the county named after him and would attempt to preserve that honor unviolated. Those of us who live in Cabarrus County today can also cherish the honor of having the county named for our distinguished French namesake, Stephen Cabarrus, patriot, friend of education, public servant. Thank you for joining us. We hope to see you again real soon. Hi, I'm Janet Dearman, Executive Director with Historic Cabarrus. Thank you for joining us for another Historical Moment segment. If you have ideas or suggestions of pieces or areas that you'd like for us to visit, please contact me at area code 704-920-2465 or you may email me at hiscab1 at ctc.net or you may drop something in the mail at post office box 966 Concord, North Carolina 28026. We'd like to leave you with some beautiful images of historic Edenton which was the home of Stephen Cabarrus. Thanks for joining us.
Thank you.